Hi guys, my name is Lindsay and welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. So today's video I am talking all about how I got my CPA license in Massachusetts. So yes, I am officially a certified public accountant. Ooh, so exciting. The day that I got the email that I was approved for my license was such a great day. I felt so happy and really just genuinely fulfilled with where my career was at the moment. For those of you guys who are very curious, I am very happy at my current job. So that's also why I'm not really filming and I'm just really tuning into my career. But as the title shows, today I'm talking all about how I got my CPA license in Massachusetts. There are a little bit of hardcore bullets in here, but a lot of it will just be my own personal experience. And you guys know how I am. I always like to share this information because I'm so fortunate to have mentors that I can ask these things to because of just the circumstances that I was in, but I realized not everybody is that lucky. So you guys can always ask questions down below. And before I go anywhere, two things I have to mention. I'm in Massachusetts. Every state is different. You don't expect it, but then all of a sudden you have a friend who has residency in Mass applying for their CPA exams. You're in Rhode Island, you do the same thing at a certain time, and then Rhode Island might reject you because of their difference literature on who was able to apply when. So that's just one thing to be incredibly mindful of. This is the lovely state of Massachusetts here. And another thing that I do have to mention is it is April 1st of 2020 and the literature on when you are able to do these applications is always changing and the different requirements is always changing. Accounting is such an evolving career that you do have to go into the literature and kind of take people's words with a grain of salt because change is the essence of the CPA license. So before I kind of get into my own personal story time of how I got my CPA license, I do want to say that there are three major requirements to becoming a CPA. That is pass the four exams, no ethics exam, thankfully MASS doesn't require that, get the education requirement fulfilled, and then get the experience and then apply. So it is the exams, education, and experience that are the three core components of becoming a CPA in the state of Massachusetts. All right, so let's just get into my own story and I'll have a lot of tips and tricks here and you know, just my own learning experiences as I went through my journey to become a certified public accountant. So in the summer of 2018, I graduated and I took the four CPA exams and that was the route that I wanted to take first. And so that kind of fulfills that completely component. I took an entire summer off to apply and just bang out the exams before I started working full time at the big four. And I wanted to take my exams before finishing up the education component simply because I knew that working during busy season it would be a lot easier to come home and take an online drawing class or something as opposed to studying for the FAR exam. So I knew that while I had the time to work full time, I wanted to take my CPA exams during the summer and kind of sort out the education component afterwards. And if you guys want resources on how to pass the exams, I have an ebook linked below. And I also have a lot of videos from over a year, like almost years ago now at this point of when I took the exams. Those videos really do cover the exam component, but what I found to be extremely confusing was the education and the experience. So now let's just get into the education component. When you want to fulfill the education requirement for Massachusetts, I highly recommend you go into the 252 CMR Board of Registration and Public Accountancy Literature. And I have the link down below here. This is pretty consistently updated I think based on what I found and this gives you all the detail you need for the education requirements. So one core component to the education requirement is that you need 150 college credits. Now this doesn't necessarily mean that you need to get your master's in accounting or tax but you may need your master's to hit the 150 credits. So from my perspective this is just how I did things was my junior year of college I started to realize that I would want to become a CPA and it was free to add an extra class every semester to my course load. So in my junior year, I started to take, I think six classes instead of the regular five, and that was free. And I was thinking to myself, even though it's hard right now to balance six classes, I'd much rather do this now than pay $1,000 over the summer to take a class. So I think I graduated with about 133 credits after putting in that effort. And after that, I took all of my extra classes 
online through my local state college. And these classes were so easy and I was actually thinking if I should, even if I'm not pursuing my master's, if I'd like to take some accounting classes or maybe tax. But at the end of the day, I took everything revolving like drawing and history just because over the summer I was taking those classes and during the fall afterwards I was also taking those classes when I was working at the big four and I had no desire to cram more accounting into my brain. So I'm reading the 252 CMR right now, specifically for the route that I took, which was obtained at least a bachelor degree um, because I didn't take my master's is that you need at least 30 semester hours of accounting courses and at least 24 semester hours of business courses. It can be a little bit stressful to see all this detail on what courses you need and my best advice is to order your college transcript print it out and then circle everything that is an accounting class, circle everything that's a business class, tally them up and then decide, can I really afford to take a drawing class right now or do I need more accounting credits? So that's how I did it. And I think like every other week I'd go back into my transcript and double count just in case because I didn't want to have a regret down the road that I didn't have enough accounting courses or business courses. And I think that if you take your master's, you are all set on that end because you will have absolutely hit the 150 credits and you will have absolutely hit the total business credits and accounting credits that you need. But like I say, always read the 252 CMR. Things are always changing, but this is just the route that I took. After you fulfill your education requirement, and I really do stress that you want to print out your transcripts, count everything up. I wound up having to send over three transcripts transcripts, which was a little bit stressful to really keep track of all of my records um, from the three different colleges I had credits from. And after that, you send those to NASBA. And I have the link down below where you do this. And this is where you get your AECR, which is your academic credits evaluation report, I think. So then you do that application. I think it costs about $100. And then NASBA will say, okay, you have enough credits and the education fulfilled to go to the next step of your application. So online for the AECR, the Academic Credit Evaluation Report, it says that you don't have to do this if when you applied for the CPA exams, you already had that 150 credit requirement fulfilled because it's kind of like Nas was saying, well, we already checked you when you took the exams. Why do we have to check you again before you get your license? However, I do have a friend who applied for his exams when he had the 150 credits and he still took this step to apply for the ACER, the AECR, Academic Credit Evaluation Report, just for the sake of continuity in the process. And I actually really appreciated that because I was going through the process too at the same time as him and I kind of wanted to take those steps at the same time and kind of like communicate how things were going on our ends. So I just remember emailing him, I was like, hey, have you been approved yet for your ACER? And he'd tell me no and then we'd kind of ping pong back and forth, maybe send out an email and just go through the process together, which was really helpful. So like I said, that costs $100 and it's done with NASBA. So that fulfills the education requirement and that's kind of how I took the process. It was a lot of tracking, it was a lot of random classes online because I didn't have the finances to get my master's. But of course everybody's different. As I'm going to say so many times in this video, read the 252 CMR please, it is so helpful. So that finishes up the education requirement and let's get into the experience. This is the longest part in my opinion because all you can do is wait and continue to put in those hours. So my personal experience was that I did the exams, I finished up my education and I got my ACER fulfilled. And after that, I was kind of twiddling my thumbs just trying to get in that experience and then I could do my final application. So for the experience, it is generally that you need one year in public accounting to become a CPA. However, there is more detail in the literature of the 252 CMR, and you can also get your experience through private accounting. At the time of my application, I needed at least one year in public accounting, and I also needed at least 2,000 hours in experience that were tracked and documented. So I remember I was kind of unsure on how to go about this, and my best advice is to just pull your WIP reports from work, and I think this will be familiar with with a lot of you guys, or at least pull your hourly timesheets, if that's how you guys call it, and count up your hours of experience in tax, 
audit compilations etc because yes you do need to fulfill one year of experience in public accounting but you also do need to have the at least 2,000 hours of experience and I'm not going to talk about private accounting in this video just because I don't have expertise in it and I'm not comfortable to but I will share the link of the 252 CMR which will be very helpful so that is kind of something that you do need to track on your own end and I found that through my previous employer there were tracking bots and other ways to kind of keep in touch with how many hours you had but they were pretty inconsistent and my best advice is to just pull a whip report get it in excel do some kind of a sum if function or whatever and count up those hours and i do want to stress that the hours required are not just audit anymore and that was an update that i've been tracking for the longest time because as you guys all know i am a tax accountant and i do majority tax and when i at first thought that the 2000 hours had to be all audit i thought that i was deemed to have to get my experience over the course of five years because I don't do that much audit. So thankfully they have updated the literature to include hours of accounting attest, compilation, management advisory, financial advisory, tax, and consulting skills. So as you guys can see, that is one example of just how much the field is evolving. This gets to the components of when you finish your experience, and that is the one year in public accounting if you're taking the public routes, and at least 2,000 hours of experience. So this is when you switch gears and you stop working with NASBA and you start working with the State Board of Accountancy. So I have this link right below that I'm going to be attaching, and this is to finally go into that licensing portal and do the application. So I finally had the experience, I had my education fulfilled, and it was time to get into the portal. So I walked into the process knowing that I needed at least four letters. I needed a partner signature attesting to my experience, and I needed three letters of recommendation for my professional character. My advice here is that do not write the letters or do not start drafting them until you get into the portal because there you will find a lot of detail on exactly what needs to go into those letters. For example, I think the letter from your partner has to include a lot of certain language for it to be approved for you to get the license. So I remember when I started this process, I was just thinking, where is any of this detail online? I'd be going on to Reddit, what needs to be in the letters? Are there templates for this? How do I do this? And just wait until you get into the portal and you will find that it is very crystal clear. And so then at that point in the portal, I think to wrap up my application, to submit the letters and a photo of myself, I think it wound up costing almost $200. So in total, my CPA license um, had a price tag of over $1,000 for the exam, $100 to get my education, um, reviewed and then $200 I think around that price to get my actual license and then after that I clicked submit I think I got a receipt in the mail with my payments and I just waited at least a month maybe a little bit more not too long and then I finally got approved for the license so that wraps up the story of how I got my CPA license and like I said it is get the exams get the education experience and then log in and apply and one thing that I thought was kind of interesting that I do want to point out is yes the exams are done through NASBA and then your education is also reviewed with NASBA but then the final step with your experience and all the letters is with the State Board of Public Accountancy and I thought that was a really kind of crisp line that I wanted to define because it did feel like at certain points I was kind of jumping around through different portals and logins yeah so I feel like I have quite a few logins from this whole process but um, thank you guys for watching and of course questions down below you guys can ask me whatever you want um, some people like to DM me on Instagram questions I love answering those as well and I wish you guys luck and I hope you guys are all staying healthy and yeah I have a lot of plans for YouTube once I move out and also once I get through a busy season but I'm just a lot happier in my career right now and I'm really enjoying focusing on it so thank you and have a great day and subscribe if you guys like this thanks <music>